Hey guys, welcome back to Pop Culture with Pat. It's officially the new year, so it's time to talk about my most anticipated movies for 2021. Let's get started. But first, we go ahead and get into the countdown. Make sure if you guys aren't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the bell button next to it, just so that way you get notifications for all my new videos. And without further ado, first we're going to start off with some honorable mentions. So these are some films that I'm really looking forward to. They just didn't quite crack the top 10 on my most anticipated list. Um, one of them being Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. Uh, so this is, you know, an upcoming Marvel movie. There's like three or four of them coming out this year. And, um, you know, I'm really looking forward to it just because it's Marvel and rarely have they let me down. You know, there might have been like a few missteps, but for the most part out, they've been pretty consistent up to this point. And, um, you know, it's a new character, so I'm just really interested to see what they do with this character and how he fits into the larger MCU. So really looking forward to that. Um, another project actually I'm also looking forward to is The Eternals. Again, another Marvel project. I don't really know a whole lot about these characters. I feel like they're it's kind of similar to the Guardians of the Galaxy, and this won't be the first time that I bring them up, um, but I feel like it's kind of like with them where not a lot of people know about them outside kind of diehard comic book fans, um, but it has a really, really great cast, so I'm looking forward to see what they do with them. Um, I he I've heard rumors of like a young Thanos being in the movie, and it's going to be dealing with a lot of like cosmic stuff, so really interested to see what they do with that, so I can't wait to see that later this year. We also have Resident Evil. So this is supposed to be like a reboot of, you know, the franchise, which they had a number of different films, um, Paul W.S. Anderson. And, you know, some I, I like the first, like, first two, um, you know, I, or I think are really fun, even though some people don't like them. I like the first two. After that, it kind of gets, you know, it goes a little bit downhill from there. Um, but I'm, I'm really curious to see what they do with this film because I've heard they're really trying to go back to the roots of like the video game and, and make it more scary and stuff like that. So it's one of those movies that I hope if they if done well, it can be an awesome, awesome movie. Um, so really looking forward to that. And um, another video, we got a little bit of a theme going here. Another uh, video game movie that we're getting is Mortal Kombat. Originally, it was supposed to come out, I believe, like in like January, but it's gotten like pushed back a few months now. Um, so this is another kind of reboot of like a franchise. Um, this I'm really looking forward to because we have James Wan, I believe, as like a producer, and it's supposed to be you no know, rated R. It's going to have like fatalities. Uh, so this looks like it has the potential to be a really badass film. So uh, you know, we haven't gotten like a trailer or anything like that. We've just gotten that like one poster up to this point, but it's something that you know I like the original Mortal Kombat film you know when it came out I haven't seen either one of them I know the second one's not really that great it's actually pretty bad um, but I haven't seen either one of those in like quite some time so I think it'll be fun to try and you know bring this franchise you know back to like the you know the present time and see what they can do with it maybe improve on things a little bit better. Spiral is another film that I'm really looking forward to this year that didn't quite make the top 10 uh, it's supposed to be kind of a reinvigoration of the Saw franchise uh, Chris Rock he's kind of taking his spin on things um so and it has him you know chris rock samuel L. jackson and from the trailer that we got you know it looks really interesting and um so that was one of the films i was really looking forward to last uh in last year in 2020 but ended up getting pushed back um so something that i really really want to see uh the first saw was you know fantastic from there it kind of gradually like went downhill um, but I'm, I'm hoping with this film they can kind of inject some new blood into the franchise. We also have The Conjuring 3, The Devil Made Me Do It. Um, another, you know, horror film. I've really liked the first two, you know, movies in the franchise. First one's definitely the better one. I, I like the second one. Wasn't quite as good. Um, but it's been a couple years, so I'm really curious to see, you know, what they bring to the table with the third movie. Uh, from what I remember, it's supposed to be based off uh, the Warrens and doing this investigation uh, based off this guy who's basically blaming like you know possessions and stuff like that for all these murders and stuff that he's like committed uh, So the the premise sounds really you know interesting to me um, So I can't wait to see what they do with that James Wan is a producer um, you know, kind of disappointing that he hasn't come back and done like, you know, the, the second one or he's not doing this third film in the franchise. But as long as he's attached to the project, you have my interest. So looking forward to that one. 
Finally, for my honorable mentions, uh, we have Judas and the Black Messiah. I actually, for some reason, like the trailer uh, came out, so totally like my bad, but I just saw the trailer fairly recently for this, and holy shit, like first off, whoever cut the trailer, did the music and stuff like that, they should get like an award just for that, because man, watching the trailer for this thing, and it's like the story about, um, you know, kind of how like the Black Panthers like came about, um, so I I'm, I'm interested to learn a little bit more about that. I, I am slightly worried, because I've seen some people mention that Will they really tell like the whole story? It might be a little watered down. That is something to worry about. I don't know like the whole story. Um, so I mean, I wouldn't really know. I'd have to do a little bit more research into it, you know, after like the film comes out. But I hope they don't do that. But you know, we'll see. But just for what we've seen in like the trailer, uh, the two main actors, you know, I've been kind of fans of them ever since I saw them both in, uh, in Get Out. Um, and I think that, you know, just from what we see in that, you know, this little clip, um, seem to bring like a lot of energy and really passionate about like this role. And just like I said, the music in the trailer, the way, you know, it looks and everything looks like it's going to be a really great movie. So I can't wait till that comes out later this year. Also guys, I'm going to do a little disclaimer for this video. You know, as, as I always have to do, I mentioned it in my favorite films from 2020. Uh, this is just my personal and most anticipated films of the year. I can almost guarantee that your guys' lists are probably going to be different uh, because it would be kind of boring if everyone's list was all the same. So I'm sure I'm going to have some films on there that you're like, oh, that doesn't deserve to be on there. And that's fine. You know, these are, like I said, these are just the movies that I'm most looking forward to right now. This list also doesn't include, you know, some of the smaller, like, independent films that sometimes go under the radar and then I catch like later on at the end of the year. So it doesn't include really any of those because we don't really know anything if a whole lot about them or I haven't seen them yet up to this point. So just keep that in mind. Again, my, my personal uh, 10 films that I'm looking forward to this year. Without further ado, let's go ahead into the top 10 list. So at number 10, we have The Little Things. It's funny because I actually just found out about this or heard about this movie fairly recently, and it's a movie that comes out at the end of January as of right now. Um, and basically the biggest thing that caught my eye was that you have three Academy Award winners in one film. You have Denzel Washington, Jared Leto and Malik Remy. I mean, what more could you really ask for? And it's a psychological thriller. So just from like what I've seen with the trailer, really caught my attention. I can't wait to see, you know, what this is all about. And we don't have to really wait that long. It comes out at the end of the month. At number nine, we have Black Widow. After getting pushed back from her 2020 release, it looks like we're finally gonna be getting Black Widow's solo debut in 2021. Um, you know, I was lo really looking forward to this last year. I've uh, always been a fan, you know, big fan of the Black Widow character, and I feel like it's it's long overdue that you know she's finally getting her own film. Uh, I'm really curious to see how you know this movie is going to play into the rest of the MCU. Um, mostly because, you know, spoilers, if you guys haven't seen Endgame by now, but, you know, she dies in that film. Uh, I know this takes place in between, I believe it's like Civil War and Infinity War. Um, so I just, I really want to see what kind of effect this has on the rest of the MCU. Will we see her somehow come back, like, later on down the line? Um, also really want to see, you know, Taskmaster. He looks pretty badass in the movie and the trailers that we've seen. So that's why this is made my number nine. At number eight, we have Godzilla versus King Kong. It literally doesn't get much bigger than this. Literally. Yeah, I know, bad joke. But yeah, I mean, fans of these two monsters have been waiting for this fight for decades now. And it looks like we're finally gonna be getting that film in 2021. You know, it, it says Godzilla versus King Kong. I'll be interested to see how much of a fight we actually get between the two characters because I'm sure at some point they're probably going to team up and fight another monster in the film. But just having these two monsters in one film, you know, fighting each other or whatever, it's probably going to be one of the biggest blockbusters of the year, man. There's just so many puns in this talking about this one movie. But yeah, it's one that I really hope at the point by this comes out that I can, I'm going to try and go out and see this because I feel like this is a movie that you definitely have to see on the big screen. You know, definition of like a summer blockbuster right here. At number seven, we have Dune. Now, full disclaimer right here, I've never read the books or, or anything like that. So you guys might be like, you know, well, why is this in your most anticipated movies list? After, you know, seeing the trailer, I was just like, wow, this looks like something that I would, you know, I'm really interested in. And like I said, not having read the books or anything like that, but just seeing the trailer, it looks like a smart 
action sci-fi film um, and, and the cast is absolutely amazing. There's a ton of people in this film um, and I'm, I'm really, you know, looking forward to see how this whole thing kind of plays out because, um, you know, right now there's kind of the issue with uh, Warner Brothers. They're like, oh, we're going to re be releasing all of our films both on HBO Max and theaters at the same time. And the uh, director and the producers and stuff of this film were like, yeah, I don't think so. So, I'm really curious to see if this is going to end up going just strictly to theaters, if they're going to like hopefully, or if they push it back, hopefully not, um, because I, I I don't know, from what I've seen, it, it just seems like they're not going to let it hit HBO Max at the same time, uh, which it makes sense. This is another film, it looks like, that you probably would want to see in theaters for the first time, um, so definitely this is one that I feel like it will probably come out this year, but I don't know. I also, there's a small chance that it could get pushed back if they don't resolve things as far as like Warner Brothers and that stuff goes. But I'm looking forward to Dune regardless. At number six, we have The Suicide Squad. So while this isn't my most, it's not my number one, my most anticipated film of the year, it might be the film that has the most potential to be like either number one or be up there at the end of the year, if that makes sense. So let me explain myself. Um, you know, the biggest thing for this movie, because I liked the original Suicide Squad. It was good. It wasn't, wasn't great by no means at all. It definitely had a lot of problems. But one of the biggest things that has me excited about this film is the fact that James Gunn is directing it. And we got like a little, um, you know, some footage uh, for like b before like the WB thing of, or actually in like the WB trailer with like showing some of the characters and stuff like that. And it just looks like really zany. We have a lot of obscure characters and it just really, really gives me the vibes of when I first time I saw like the Guardians of the Galaxy trailer and James Gunn did that as well. Um, so I'm really getting some Guardians vibes here. So I, I think this has the potential to be one of the most like fun, entertaining movies of the year. So I, I'm super, super excited to see this. And I never thought I was gonna say that after the first one, you know, it, it definitely would have been a film that probably wouldn't have made like my top 10 if anyone else was maybe directing it. I just think James Gunn is like the perfect guy to put, you know, behind the camera, camera and bring, you know, some of these weird characters to the big screen. So can't wait for the Suicide Squad. At number five, we have Ghostbusters Afterlife. Last year, 2020, this was one of my most anticipated films of the year. Unfortunately, everything got pushed back, as I've told you guys a million times already. Um, but I was really looking forward to this. You know, I like from the trailer, it looks like this takes place in kind of like a small town, which I, I like, you know, because the other, like the original like Ghostbusters films, those were like in the big city. So I like the change of scenery and just like, you know, the cast in this film, we have like Paul Rudd, we had Finn Wolfhard, McKenna McGrace, um, I believe I said her name right. Uh, we have, you know, a couple of those like actors as well as I believe they're just cameos or very, you know, like small roles as some of the original, you know, Ghostbusters, which is going to be awesome. So and from that trailer, you know, it just got me really more anticipating this film. Uh, so I can't wait till this comes out, you know, later this summer. At number four, we have A Quiet Place Part Two. Oh, man. Last year, you know, this was originally supposed to come out in March. And I remember it was like I was like two weeks away or something like that from seeing it, had my tickets all ready to go. And then everything went to hell. So it got pushed back as all these like other movies did as well. Um, but I was, you know, I'm, I've been eagerly anticipating the sequel to the original A Quiet Place. I saw this in theaters and it was one of my favorite films from when I came out a couple years ago. So I'm really looking forward to what they do, uh, you know, as far as just like a sequel, uh, we get to see from what it what it looks like in the trailer, we get to see kind of how things have started with some flashbacks and really just opening up that world. So this is a movie that I can't wait to see. And that's why it's, you know, it's so high up on my list just because of how much I love that original film. At number three, we have Last Night in Soho. So not really as known, not too much is known about this film. Um, there's really just like a synopsis. We don't have any kind of trailer or anything like that. But it's directed by Edgar Wright, and it's starring one of my favorite actresses right now, and that's Anya Taylor-Joy, as you guys can see by my uh, new print that I got of The Queen's Gambit. I've been a fan of hers pretty much like since The Witch has come out, and every project that's come out with her, you know, I, I basically have checked out. So with this, you know, her being in the film, that just definitely just adds it. I mean, Edgar Wright, he's a great director. And the, you know, the synopsis about the film, so basically it's about a young wannabe girl who is, uh, 
like a fashion designer or wants to be like a fashion designer and she mysteriously travels back to the 1960s to meet her idol and it's supposed to be a psychological horror film so it, just the idea really intrigues me and like i said with you know having a great director like edgar wright anya taylor joys in the film you definitely have my attention right there at number two, we have Halloween Kills. So Halloween Kills is the follow-up to the massively successful Halloween 2018. And in this film, we're seeing a bunch of familiar faces return to the franchise and what is promised to be a bloodbath to that follow-up in 2018. You know, I've interviewed James Jude Courtney. I've had him on the channel a couple times just talking about, you know, this film and how crazy it's supposed to be. You know, we were supposed to see it in October and we have to wait another year, which really sucks. But from the couple, you know clips and trailers that we've gotten it looks like shit's really gonna go down in this movie so i can't wait you know i'm a big horror film as you guys have seen some of my other movies that i mentioned in this list i'm a big horror fan and you know just halloween fan like overall so that's why halloween kills is my number two most anticipated film of 2021 all right guys so we have finally arrived at my number one most anticipated film of 2021 and that is spider-man 3 aka whatever they're going to end up calling it. Basically, the live-action Into the Spider-Verse film. Uh, so initially, Spider-Man 3 would, would have probably been, you know, a few ranks lower on this list. Like, I definitely still would have been looking forward to it because I've loved both, to, both of the uh, Tom Holland films. But with 2000, probably one of the few things that was really good about 2020 is we just kept getting more and more news about this film and the casting and stuff like that. I mean, they're going to be having... Uh, you know, Electro, Jamie Foxx is coming back. They have Doc Ock coming back. Uh, they have Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. So this, like, li literally, this is basically going to be a live-action Spider-Verse film. Um, you know, I'm kind of surprised in a way because I, I just didn't think, you know, after Endgame with Marvel, I thought it was going to be at least, like, several years before we got, you know, another big kind of MCU movie. Um, so I, I definitely wasn't expecting that with Spider-Man 3. But, hey, if you want to give that to me now, I am totally on board. The cast, you know... The only thing I will say is, like, you know, with some of the Spider-Mans in the past, like, not necessarily Marvels, but, like, Sony and stuff like that, when they've had a bunch of different characters, things haven't always worked out. But I have faith with Kevin Feige and just, like, the Marvel team that they're going to put these characters, they're going to make them fit, their, uh, fit in right, and this is going to probably be one of the most insane movies of the year. Fingers crossed it does come out for 2021. It's supposed to come out, I believe, at the end of the year. So hopefully everything goes right. Fingers crossed. Please, please, please want to see this movie for 2021. Um, there's a slight chance it could get pushed back, but I hope it comes out this year. So anyways, guys, yeah, that is my most anticipated films of 2021. You know, I had some honorable mentions in there for you, my top 10 lists. I'm, I'm really curious to see what your guys' list looks like. You know, like I said at the beginning of the video, I can almost guarantee all of our lists are probably going to be different. You know, people like different films and stuff like that. And just because something didn't make my most anticipated, you know, list doesn't mean that, you know, I don't want to see it. Like I said, there's some stuff like some of the smaller independent stuff. I might just not have heard anything about it yet. And that's why it didn't end up on here. But let me know. Maybe you guys have heard some of these, you know, some of these different films. I know there's one that I was going to put on the list, but I just don't know if it's, uh, you know, coming out this year. And I believe it's... Um, the Norseman, and that's uh, it's directed by Robert Eggers, and it has Anya Taylor Joy in it as well. Um, that was a film. I think it just recently wrapped up, so I I don't know if it's going to come out in 2021. But that's another film that I'm really looking forward to. But yeah, let me know what you guys you know. What is your most anticipated films look like in 2021? Let me know down below in the comments. And again, if you guys are new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button as well as the bell button next to it, just to you know really help out the channel. And that way you don't get notification, or that way you get notifications for all my new videos. You want to make sure you get those notifications because YouTube especially with smaller channels it's kind of a pain in the ass sometimes but yeah do that so that way you get notifications for all my new videos if you can also give this video a thumbs up really helps out you know with the youtube algorithm helps my channel so i appreciate it so much guys and as always please make sure to check back for more pop culture with pat